Hello and welcome to my personal top 10 favorite games of all times. Well, since I got my 50th subscriber, I thought I would do something special for this channel. And I thought I would do something like a top 10, since I didn't really do a video like that before and I want to make one. So I decided to make a top 10 favorite games of all time video. I've been a gamer about 15 years now, I've experienced games that I love. Games which I thought had great potential, but didn't live up to it. Games that I were absolutely disappointed to. So for this video, I thought I would create a top 10 favorite game of all time I played because frankly, I'm a mostly positive and cheerful guy. I don't really go around talking about games I hate, because it's not really all that fun to me. I mean, if I hated a game, I wouldn't really want to talk about it. Talking about it would really just stir up memories of me playing the game, and that would just be painful to me. I mean, if a particularly bad game belongs in a series that I love, then I would probably discuss about it. But overall, I tend to be positive and don't try to think of the bad games I've played over the years. But enough about my preferences about making videos or discussions about video games. Let's get down to the my top 10 favorite games of all time list. But before we begin, I have to say a few things. Note that the game on the list are games I completed. So there might be games that I think might make it to the list, but haven't beaten it yet. Such as Xenoblade Chronicles, which I'm having a blast playing through. Also note that this is my opinion and games you may like are games that I might absolutely hate or games that I never had the pleasure of playing. Also know that I'm only listing one game per franchise. So anyway, let's begin the countdown. At number 10 is Ninja Gaiden Sigma on the PS3 or the original Ninja Gaiden on Xbox or its re remake on the Xbox game Ninja Gaiden Black, which I never had the pleasure of playing, but still. This game is unusual to me because it's not a game I'm really good at. I mean, most of the games on the list are I'm not the best at, but at least I'm good enough them that I wouldn't say I'm a bad player, but Ninja Gaiden Sigma? or Ninja Gaiden, or even Ninja Gaiden Black, I say I'm okay at best. But even though I kinda suck at it, and my brother is way better at the game than me, and he's the one playing through the playthrough of Ninja Gaiden Sigma on my channel at the moment, I have to say I love it still. I love how many different weapons Ninja Gaiden has. I love how many different combo combinations become available to you when you upgrade the weapons. And I love the upgrade system. Especially when you turn a wooden sword with this big ore and then just wreck enemies with it. That's so satisfying. Seeing as how the wooden sword is like the weakest weapon in the game, and it becomes the strongest weapon in the game. Just really satisfying when you upgrade it to its max. Especially when you can use a Zuna drop with the big wooden ore weapon. I can't remember what it's called, sorry. I mean you can't really do that with uh, other giant weapons like the Warhammer. So yeah, it's really satisfying. I also love how smooth and precise the controls are, and also how fast-paced Ninja Gaiden is. I love the enemy variety in Ninja Gaiden Sigma also. I love how if you figure out the pattern, they come a lot easier than they were when you didn't know. Ninja Gaiden 2 got this, but I found that they had too many unblockable throws compared to Ninja Gaiden 1, so I probably rate it lower than Ninja Gaiden 1, in my honest opinion. I felt it was more cheap than Ninja Gaiden 1, so that's probably why I, um, I rate Ninja Gaiden 2 lower than Ninja Gaiden 1. But overall, I still had fun with Ninja Gaiden 2. So overall, I love Ninja Gaiden for its enemy variety, precise controls, fast-paced combat, upgrade system, how challenging it is and how the satisfaction of coming from that challenge. 
And those are the main reasons why I put Ninja Gaiden Sigma, Ninja Gaiden, and Ninja Gaiden Black. Even though I haven't played it, I'm sure I would enjoy it as number 10 on my top 10 favorite games of all time list. Onward to the next one on the list. Oh yeah, and also note that I'm a huge RPG fan. So most of the other games on this list are RPGs. Man, the choice between number 9 and number 8 was very hard for me. Very, very hard. Because I love them pretty equally, and either of them can overtake each other pretty easily to me. But I have to give an edge to number 8 for the time moment, and I tell you that when I get to it. But number 9 is Tales of the Abyss. Man, it was also hard to choose, because I have to choose one game per franchise. and. As you know, Tales of the Abyss is a Tales game, and if you watch why I love Tales series video, then you know why I love the series. But to reiterate why I love the series for people who haven't watched the video, I love the Tales series for the combat system, and the characters, either outside of the story in combat where each of them is so usually fun to play with, or inside the story with the character interaction. Well, then I got most of the other RPG conventions I like. Anyway, I love each Tales game pretty equally. Well, maybe except Tales and Symphonia down in the new world. But overall, it's really hard to say which one I like better. One Tales game usually has one thing it does better than another, but at the exact same time, that same Tales game is lacking in some areas that another Tales game will excel in. So really, it's really hard for me to pick one. But if I had to pick one, it'd have to be Tales of the Abyss. Why the game might not have the best combat system in the series, which belongs to Grace's F in my opinion, and or the best story, which is Legend Dia, is probably the most solid. It got a great story, with Legend Dia being the only Tales game having a better story. The combat system is great, with Vesperi and Grace's are the one that surpasses it. The cast of characters is also pretty good. What I love about it is the cast of villains and antagonists, which are the god generals. I love how each god general is connected to each member of the party, and each of them are pretty interesting by itself. Even though the main antagonist isn't my favorite in the series, I have to give props for the other antagonists. Yeah, it got its issues with the backtracking and all, but overall I think it's the most solid Tales games. It got a great combat system with the FOF being really fun. It got a good cast of characters, with Vesperia being the only Tales game that surpasses it in terms of cast of characters. This story is also pretty good, being only inferior to Legendia. And the music is really good. And the voice acting is great as well. So overall, why Tales of the Best might not have the best combat system in the series, or the best cast, is probably the most solid in my opinion with only a few issues with it, which is backtracking. And that's mostly the main reason why I put Tales of the Abyss as number 9 on my top 10 favorite games of all time. Onward to the next game! Swims just fine. Fall in, Sevens. At number eight, we got Valkyrie Chronicles. This was very tough to pick between this and Tales of the Abyss. But when it came down to it, I had to pick Valkyrie Chronicles a bit higher in the list. I mean, I like Tales of the Abyss combat system more. And I do like the character and interaction better. But when it comes down to it, Valkyrie Chronicles is the one that impressed me the most between the two. 
because it had a fantastic presentation. I mean, Tales of the Abyss looks good, but Valkyria Chronicles looked fantastic for the time it came out. While Tales of the Abyss looked pretty good, but not the best one on the market at the time. So yeah, that's probably the reason why I picked Valkyria Chronicles as number 8. And the combat system of Valkyria Chronicles really surprised me. It was totally different from what I've played in previous games. It was very fresh and absolutely fun to play. It impressed me more uh, at the time when I was playing it, even though I might like the combat system or character interaction better in Abyss. Anyway, onward to Valkyria Chronicles. I love this game. This game is probably my favorite game of the 7th generation of consoles, which is the PS3, 360, Wii, you know. It had fantastic graphical style that I absolutely love, especially since I'm a huge anime fan. The gameplay was a unique blend of SRPG and TPS elements, which really made the gameplay really enjoyable and fresh to me when I was playing the game. The main cast of character was good, and each character had their own distinct personality from the character models, dialogue during battle, which characters would work well with each other, their hidden potential, etc. The leveling system was also great as you didn't need to grind everyone if you had lost in battle. Though I would probably start if I did lose someone thanks to my experience with the Fire Emblem series. And there was a good amount of customization with the R&D and squad selection tab. There was also a good amount of side content with extra reports, with some of them giving extra backstory to the main cast. And I also adore the story. It has been done before, but I just love how it was presented in Valkyria Chronicles. And the ending was fantastic, it left me totally satisfied when I played through the game. And I really like how the game gives you a little bit of information about Europa in the Cyclopedia tab. Whether it be different countries, like the Empire or Atlantic Federation, to even Gallia, even gives background information about characters you play in the game, besides the main cast. So yeah, I really like that in Valkyria Chronicles. The voice acting soundtrack was fantastic. Plus, it's one of the few games that got both the Japanese and English voice acting in them. So yeah, those are the main reasons why I considered Valkyria Chronicles number 8 on my top 10 favorite games of all time list. Persona. Thou, from the sea of thy soul I come up. I am Orpheus, master of strings. As we suspected. At number 7 we got Persona 3 FES. This one was tough to choose since it was between this or Persona 4. I love both games for the great story, good characters, great social links, and great turn-based combat system. But I'd have to go with Persona 3 FES for the 7th position on my favorite game of all time list. Yeah, the AI can be pretty bad at times, and it is pretty crucial when you can't really direct control them, like in Persona 4. But I have to say I enjoy a couple stuff better in Persona 3 than I did in Persona 4. For one, I like the main cast of characters in Persona 3 better. I found the story more compelling, even though it does take some time for the cast to have a focus on their objective, as compared to Persona 4 where they were always um, aimed at finding the person who was putting people into the TV world. And I loved the ending in Persona 3, not counting the answer. Gameplay wise, well, I like Persona 4 combat system better, since it wasn't much as a hassle like Persona 3. I did miss a couple stuff, like multiple attributes to physical attacks such as slash, pierce, etc. Also, I like time management better in Persona 3. It gives you more of a heads up to how much time you have left with the moon system, which is basically one month, as compared to Persona 4 weather system, where it's kind of random at times, it doesn't really have a pattern. So yeah, those are the main reasons why I like Persona 3 more than Persona 4. 
Could it also possibly because I played Persona 3 first and played Persona 4 after? Maybe. But still, I can't shake the feeling that I like Persona 3 better than Persona 4. But anyway, let's talk about Persona 3. There are many elements of why I love Persona 3. Like I said before, I love the story. It does take its time to get interesting, but once it passes that threshold, I was hooked to find out what happened next. I love the combat system. The one more and weakness system made the game very fun to play through, as you were going up Tartarus. And I found it got good amount of customization with the Persona fusions. And I found the characters very endearing to me. Especially when they were going through the hard times during the game, and where they went through it, their true persona unlocked, well the true form of their persona. I found each character to be very unique in battle, such as Yukari specializing in uh, Gara skills, and her using a bow gives you uh, Pierce attribute attacks. And I love the social links in Persona 3. It gave both character backstory and character development to the characters you're talking to, and it also helped in battle, as it boosts your stats when you're fusing personas. And the music was very unique to say the least. At first I thought the music was going to get on my nerves, but then as I kept playing the game, the battle theme got very catchy. But there's also a couple reasons why it's only number 7 on this list. First reason is that, uh, as I said before, the AI can be pretty bad. Second reason is, uh, characters you don't use don't really level up with you. This might seem weird to you, and you might only use the characters you think it might be useful, but I'm very OCD about character levels, so I'll try to level them all evenly, except for the main character, which would be a really high level. Before, I would just kill off a very high level character and let the other teammates catch up. Yeah, it was that bad. But you can't really do that Persona 3 since if the MC dies, you get game over. Which is another pet period. I don't really like that um, when your main character dies, it's game over. I mean, I can understand it since you're playing as the character, but it still get on my nerves in party-based RPGs. Is it really fair for me to say that Persona 3 didn't get a higher position because of Reason 2 and 3? No, not really, and I can understand that. But it doesn't really change the fact that I don't really like it, but still, Persona 3 is still a fantastic game. Return it once! I won't. I won't return to Valhalla! At number 6, we got Valkyrie Profile, Samaria. This game is awesome. It's probably my third favorite game on the PS2. The story itself I really enjoyed, but it took some time after Chapter 3 to get it really rolling. Once it got past that, I was really invested in it. The characters were awesome, especially the main villain at the end of the game, especially that cutscene. Cutting where he revealed himself? Absolute genius, in my opinion. I mean, if you play Valkyrie Profile 1, then you could have seen it coming, but for me myself, I didn't. I got into Valkyrie Profile 2 uh, without playing the first game. It was my first entry into the series. And when that happened, I was absolutely stunned. So, yeah, great characters and great cutscenes as well. Even though there was a bit limp seeking problems with them, but that can be overlooked. Voice acting was pretty good to great for the main cast. Side characters, eh. They're okay, but it can be overlooked since they're not part of the main cast, but still. Valkyrie Profile 2 Summer also looked great for the time it was released. And I did like the dungeon design a bit since it was a bit like 2D platforming. Was it the best? No. But it was entertaining to go through. And the CU old mechanic was interesting because it kept you on your feet when 
you had a seal orb that was negatively affecting you, but when you got it, and when you got absorbed it into the Aegis cell, you could use it against the enemy into your advantage. That was really interesting to me. So dungeon design, I really like Valkyrie profile to Samaria. And the combat system was very unique and tons of fun. I might like the Teo series combat system better, but I had tons of fun playing through Valkyrie Profile 2 Samaria combat system. And looking back now, and having played a bit of Valkyrie Profile 1, it was a good way to mix uh, the 2D uh, fighting mechanic of Valkyrie Profile 1 into the 3D environments that Valkyrie Profile 2 provided. I still like Persona 3, there's still one pet peeve I have in this game. And that characters don't really level up with you. But I a little bit okay with it in this game because you get an orb that gives you experience evenly for everyone in the party later on in the game. So I didn't really have to grind through the game like I did in Persona 3, since because I'm very OCD about character levels. That and there's benefits to freeing your character souls, which is basically means you kick them out of the party. With like they provide you with strong items when you free them, so there's certain benefits. And the game also gives you unique NPCs when you uh, free their souls. So yeah, it's really interesting. So yeah, there are some mechanics I haven't talked about, such as the equipment skill mechanic in the game. Overall, Valkyrie Profile 2 Summit was an awesome game I played. Awesome characters, awesome combat system which was a great way to utilize Valkyrie Profile 1 2D fighting mechanics into a 3D environment. Good story and fantastic musical score makes Valkyrie Profile 2 Samaria number 6 on my top 10 favorite games of all time list.